Hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to Nathanael, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly a real Israelite in whom there is no deceit, no false bone in his body. Nathanael asked Jesus, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus replied, Do you believe because I told you I, that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Come and see. These three words are something I'm quite familiar with around my home. They can be heard daily down the hallway, through the walls, and filling every room sometimes. At times I'm just a witness to it happening around me. Ezra, Ezra, come and see this, how to draw animal that I just created. Isn't it good? exclaims my seven-year-old daughter. Ren, Ari, come and see this sweet front flip on the trampoline, shouts my son Ezra from outside in the backyard. Mom, come and see my house, come and see my house, Ari says while tugging convincingly on her shirt. Many times, though, I'm directly in the center of this exchange. Dad, come and see this Lego village I made. It's totally awesome. Daddy, come and see my dominoes. Come and see the snowman we made out of Play-Doh. Come and see the obstacle course I made out in the garage for my bike. Come and see. It's an invitation. An invitation, and if I'm being honest, given its frequency, I'm not always excited to receive it. Frankly, I'm inclined at times to decline the invite. Come and see. Yeah, I'm kind of busy right now. Come and see. I'll get to it in a minute. Come and see. I... I think I've seen it already, right? Show it to one of your siblings. So I'll admit when I hear come and see in the scripture today, I have mixed feelings. These three words can be both cautionary and celebratory in nature. In the examples mentioned above, it is cautionary because I know that it requires something from me. There's some cost and commitment, however small or large, on my end. On the other hand, I've experienced this celebratory aspect, the transformation, the boundless joy that is there, the fullness that these moments can bring. In the text that was shared for us by our readers, the invitation to come and see is not just a one-hit wonder, so to speak, something only at the heart of this passage, but nowhere else. But this invitation, this invitation is at the heart of all of John's gospel. It starts verses earlier than what we heard in chapter 1. John the Baptist is on the banks of the river. He's standing with two of his disciples. And here John sees Jesus. He identifies him as the Lamb of God. And without hesitation, it says, the two left John's side and followed Jesus. And when Jesus notices, he asks them, what are you looking for? Not quite sure what to say. They reply, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus says, come and see. 
Did you hear that? That part right there? Jesus says, come and see here. So when Philip utters these words in verse 46, it's not a new idea likely that he just came up with on the spot. This text would suggest that he's learned this response. Come and see. If we look at it more closely, the first part of this invitation, come, requires some movement. How far might you have to travel or go? What will you have to leave behind? And is it worth it, frankly? What's the risk involved? And the second part of the invitation, see, requires some discernment. Now that you have come, what is it that you see? Does it change you? Is there a new awareness gained through the experience? And we are to do both, come and see. The invitation requires something from us, but it's certainly not coercive. It's not, come and I'll tell you exactly who I am, or come and I'll teach you all the answers for the final exam, all the right ways to believe. It's definitely not, come and you'll be rich and famous. This is one of those cautionary places. The text seems to caution us not to limit Jesus to our preconceived categories and expectations. For instance, notice here how many names for Jesus show up in our text and in all of chapter 1 here. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Three times in chapter 1, he's referred to as the Son of God. Rabbi or teacher in verse 38 and 49. Messiah, him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. The son of Joseph from Nazareth in verse 45. And then king of Israel. And why so many names? Theologian Gail R. O'Day, and I'm, I'm drawn to this interpretation, suggests not just that it reveals the divine connection and relationship between Jesus and God, but that each disciple sees something different in Jesus and bears witness in their own way. And in this kind of spirit, it is come and see for yourself. Find out what you believe, not because I just told you that I saw you under the fig tree, for greater things than these lie ahead. This is just the beginning, Jesus is saying. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is a journey filled with pain, struggle, disappointment, joy, wonders, and hopefully many, many come and see moments. Walter Wink, theologian and activist, says, we are to go on a journey that Jesus chartered rather than to worship the journey of Jesus. And the journey of Jesus is amazing. You don't have to try hard to get stuck in this space. Just look at this text alone and we witness some jaw-dropping moments. How does Jesus get people to believe him so quickly? And he says, follow me, and Philip's in. Nathaniel takes one more interaction with Jesus, but then he's all in. And how does Jesus seem to know to say the right thing at any moment. People meet Jesus and they're changed. Whatever their deepest need, Jesus meets it. And then they go and tell others what has happened. And that seems, at least for me, like a tough act to follow. Where do we struggle to live into that, to go and continue on the journey for ourselves? And here's one of those celebratory places in the text for me. I think that this theme for this epiphany season can be revelatory for us in these specific times and in our current struggles. Come and see. Movement and discernment, cautionary and celebratory, in all of it, come and see. Where is Jesus during a global pandemic? Come and see. How is Jesus revealed amidst deep division and polarization in our country? Come and see. 
What does it look like to extend an invitation to witness the divine in 2021? Come and see. Are the core values of this community worth sharing far and wide? Come and see. Can anything good come out of North Manchester, Wabash County, Indiana? Come and see. One of the revelatory moments that I've witnessed in these times and through these struggles is how it's pushed us into some of these come and see spaces, perhaps without us even fully realizing it. People have extended invitations to worship with us. Some have done that for the first time. I know that I have just by sharing the worship link on social media. Some of you have had conversations and formed relationships with people in this community that might not have ever happened except through the congregational Zoom time. For some, it may have seemed like fellowship roulette, even scary and challenging at times, never sure who is going to show up in your group each week. But you continue to come and see, nevertheless. And how many people have you invited into your home this past year through Zoom or recorded children's stories, readings, etc.? For some, it may be the most you've opened your home in some time, not in your normal inner circle. In this past year, we've seen new members, new partnerships, new ministries flourish beyond the walls of the church and the town of North Manchester with the invitation to come and see. Others of you have used your gifts in new and more expansive ways to serve this community of faith. You don't have to look very hard to see these divine hand and footprints that are being made. Where are more of these epiphanies waiting to break through? The last two weeks, I, I posed a question for you. What is one of your favorite aspects about the life we share in this faith community? And in the more theological sense, where do you see Jesus? Where do you see Jesus? Where do you become more aware of the divine presence, the spirit moving in our midst? And here are some of your responses. Many of you said you feel the spirit moving in the uplifting and meaningful worships each, each week. The sermons, the prayers, the wide musical expressions and opportunities. Several of you expressed that your favorite aspect is how the church cares for you and others. Even though sadness and isolation have come at times you have felt loved and cared for. Specific mention was made of the cards and notes sent by individuals in this congregation. Another expressed the joy of gathering with Timbercrest residents in a circle of chairs on the Timbercrest lawn to welcome Pastor Amy, but also to hear the stories that bring us together in community. Others of you shared about the collective effort that the church has made to assist families seeking asylum in our country and how the many opportunities to learn about racism and white supremacy and how they have affected our nation's history and continues to affect our community and country. One of you mentioned the Silvertones and their musical offering that they brought on Christmas Eve through song. These strong women, adventurous, resilient older adults didn't let the pandemic stop them boldly embracing technology, singing out and blessing us with their song. And the final one uh, sent me this picture. She says it is to represent music, worship, community, service, and our many global connections. And here's the challenge that I want to leave us with. Whether you have answered the question above yet or perhaps you're still working through your response. And whatever that response becomes, whenever it, it may come, would you be willing to invite someone you know to come and see in that aspect of our congregational life? 
How can you extend this invitation in this new year, in 2021 and beyond? As you reflect on these questions, I want to offer a song that I wrote back in 2005. It it was a, a point in my life where this song became symbolic of an epiphany that was revealing itself to me, eventually leading to my decision to go to Bethany Seminary in 2006. The irony was not lost on me that this theme, Come and See for National Youth Conference that I was writing for was also happening at the same time that I was having one of these come and see moments. And each of us has a come and see moment or moments. I personally experienced one of mine through mentors, communities, friends, and loved ones who kept calling me back into the church to explore my gifts. It was in these spaces that I began to see and recognize the divine and the spirit moving in my life and all around me. As I share this song, you might reflect on what is one of your come and see moments in your life. Here we are just stretched out on this road of life, not sure of what we'll find. Searching for the way, searching for the truth, and searching for the life. And if we look within our hearts, find out who you are, where we want to be and if we look within our hearts find out who you are where we want to be so cast away your things if you want to follow me come and see that the light is shining Jesus is calling us to believe so come and see that the light is shining in you and me come and see the healer revealer guiding light free us from our fears Help us understand, open to love we can find a harmony. And if we look within our hearts, find out who you are, where we want to be. And if we look within our hearts, find out who you are and where we want to be. Cast away your things If you want to follow me Come and see That the light is shining Jesus is calling us To believe So come and see That the light is shining You and me Come and see what you're looking for. Come and see what do you need. Come and see who you want to follow. Come and see who you are. So cast away your things if you want to follow me. Come and see that the light is shining. Jesus is calling us to believe. So come and see 
that the light is shining in you and me. Come and see that the light is shining in you and me. Come and see. I'm encouraged by those words, by my children each day, and the encounters with stories like these from our congregation and in John's gospel. They remind me of the they remind me in different ways. That it doesn't just take drawing or creating the next visual masterpiece installing hundreds of solar panels in front of the church, feeding the 5,000 or turning water into wine to see Jesus and the divine at work in the world. Sometimes it's simply in the daily reminders and an invitation to come and see, to witness the divine revealed to us in Jesus. After a few moments of silent reflection, I invite you to see how Jesus was revealed and at work in this community through our 2020 video reflection. May it also move and inspire us to consider what it will look like in the year ahead for each of us to go or continue on that journey that Jesus has chartered. Amen.